What's going on, Capital Extra? Robert Bruce in the building, in the studio. You know all things homegrown, your favourite music and your favourite artists. Mine as well, we like to get in the building as well. And the guy I've got in front of me right now, when I say inspirational, there's so many different ways that you can look at it, right? But growing up where I grew up from and seeing all the young artists that have come out after this guy and all the people he's influenced and inspired. That's what I mean, inspirational this time round, man. Make some noise. It's Kano in the building. Hey. <laughs> Safe, man. No problem. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth, man. Appreciate that. So many, do you know what? So many people in, say, like, playground, um, playground bars, young artists, everyone spitting and stuff. It was a Kano influence, Kano <laughs> flows, the lyricism and all of that. And when you listen back to the old music, you can hear it in a generation of MCs, man. Do you feel? Did you feel that at the time coming out? Um, oh no, because you'd have been in it. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like when you, yeah. I guess when you when you're in it, you're in it. You know what I mean? And and I, you know, I I was one of them kids in the playground that was looking up to different people. You know what I mean? Who? It was with the DWEs mm. and the um, the Mighty Mo and uh, Bush. Um, then the Wileys and God's Gift, you know what I mean? And Sharky Major, you know what I mean? So uh, I know you how that it. feels, yeah. you know what I mean? To be doing your own thing, but kind of looking up to someone else and and and, and at the beginning kind of trying, kind of copying. Yeah, yeah. And then trying to find your own way, you know? Um, so yeah, there, there there is, you know, there's definitely a time where I've kind of, I've, I've come through now and I'm listening to new artists and I can hear... A little bit. ...myself in them <laughs> a little bit, you know what I mean? Which is which is nice, you know what I mean? It's it's um, it's um flattering. And, yeah, it's what it's what we're out here trying to do to inspire the, the next, you know what I mean? 100%. So when you're growing up here, what music's playing in the house then? House is um, uh, reggae and dancehall music at first. Um, and then getting a little bit older is like my my brother started DJing garage. Yeah, your brother got decks. Yeah, yeah, he okay. started <laughs> he started DJing garage, and then that was like, yeah, we took over the house with, <laughs> with garage music. Yeah. So when you're picking up the mic, then I think you talk about it in the Made in the Manor documentary. Okay. When you pick up the mic, is it garage flows at that time? Say when your brother first gets decks and <laughs> is it garage? <laughs> yeah, it's probably a bit of. A bit of um, garage, yeah, a bit of IT, apostrophe, <laughs> S, that, take, I guess, it's the odd, like that kind of, like, Mighty Mo inspired stroke D double E uh, ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so there's a bit of garage and the kind of the new, what was going on, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what was happening. And, you know, other guys I was like into on the, uh, on the hip hop side was like the, the bust of rhymes, you know what I mean? Because he was like mm. spitting fast, almost like at a one forty BPM. So that was another um, influence. So yeah, it was kind of like a, a mixture of all of that stuff. And then, as I say, you try and find your own style, style and your sound, and you know what I mean. Mm. So then, when you come through now, what's like the time frame and journey into becoming a grime artist, nasty crew, even the impact of Wiley. How does that all play into you becoming an artist or the grime scene at that point from your point of view? I think it it, it kind of all happened quickly. Um, but I was always, as far as I was concerned, I was always an artist, mm. you know. Um, like when a lot of people were... Like, I was doing what everyone else was doing. Going pipe radio, spitting bars, going raves, spitting bars, getting the wheel up, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was making songs at home. Yeah, you like know? a musician. Yeah, it wasn't like that. I'd done that and then the next level was making songs for an album. I was making those songs for my first album while I was doing on the pipe radio, okay. you know. Another person that kind of seemed like he was doing a similar thing was Dizzy rascal like he was always an artist he was always had a vision of i could just tell he knew who he was going to be he knew mm. his, you know what i mean he was probably that year ahead of me um in terms of his vision um 
So yeah, I was always making tunes for an album, but still doing the pirate radio thing. Um, started making tunes about 15 and then, you know, um, around 18 is when I, I really like had an album deal or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So how old was you when Home Sweet Home comes? I was 19 or 20. Oh, so still very early-ish. But yeah. you've been doing music for a while at that point. I think it was like 19, I, on my, my 19th birthday I signed a deal or something like that. Or oh, maybe real? 18 for 19th, one of them. And then the album came out either I was 19 or 20. So I was quite young. Mm -hmm. And what's going on around you at that time? Like you're about to do an album. P's and Q's has dropped at that point? Yeah, so P's and Q's dropped. I, was, I, was, I think that was 2004. So yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. I was 19 and maybe the album came out I was 20. But um, yeah, so, you know, albums are kind of the plan is for the album to come out but P's and Q's is already out um, and yeah we're just moving about and having mm. it off you know what I mean doing sh club shows ministry I think we've done that was like a massive one I remember um, and yeah just yeah, yeah it was just I don't know just a bit of a whirlwind yeah, sort of yeah I guess it's all new so you're doing pirate radio shows are coming now Please but I've, I've stopped doing Pirate Radio Oh, you then. stopped yeah, by yeah. Home Sweet Home time? Before Home Sweet Home came out, I stopped doing Pirate Radio. I think I think when P's and Q's came out, I don't think I was on the Pirate Radio anymore. Okay. What, any reason? Really, when you look back at it, you know, my, my kind of Pirate Radio stint was only like a few, like maybe three years or something. Yeah, so short in comparison to other people. Yeah, say. like really. You know what I mean? Probably 16 to... to... 18 stroke 19. Okay. Mm. That makes sense. And then when you get something like P's and Q's, yeah, do you feel the effect of everyone watching? Like, do you feel the fan base grow? Because that's in a sort of elite group of songs that you can play at any time at any rave to this day and it still goes off. What's it like? What's the impact at the time when you're in the middle of it? It's, um, it's not, it's not how, it's just different. You know what I mean? It's not, like, no one knows they got a classic tune mm. at the time. They make it or at the time of release, you just don't, you just don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Time will determine whether that's a classic or not. Um, so at the time, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good tune. It wasn't a, it wasn't a hit song. It was, on, it was big on the road. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in... It was in the club, but not like Pow, not that For big. Real? You know what I mean? Because I'll put in that elite group of songs of Pow, Talking the Heart. I think now. over the years, it's kind of worked its way into that. You know? Yeah. Where you, like, if I'm in a dance and they're playing, like, you know what I mean? They might play Pow, yeah. They might play whatever. whatever. <laughs> I know that's going to come soon. You know what yeah. I mean? So let me try and <laughs> let me try and go toilet because it's going to come on soon. <laughs> um, but at the time, it wasn't. I don't feel it was as big as those records. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, it, it wasn't... I don't know, for for me... Yeah, it, it, it wasn't like one day I just became... You know, I dropped something and became this right. superstar. I, outside looking in, that's how it was with Dizzy. Okay. From my eyes, you know what I mean? He became a star. You know what I mean? But for me, I think it's always been like um, a, a journey, you know what I mean? One step, one growing, 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 mm. small steps that when you look back now, it kind of, I don't know, you, ha you have a different kind of... Um, perspective on it. Perspective, but... And sometimes it feels like things happen quickly, but um, that's not how it f feels in the moment. Yeah, you know? yeah. I understand. So moving forward a couple of years now, more albums come. Between that, like, 2005 to 2010 period, you have London, the mm. tape, Method to the Madness in there as well, 140 Grime Street yeah. in and amongst some EPs and stuff. What do you learn both in music and in life from that time period? Um, of releasing those, that album run, um, I don't know, you just... I don't know if you learn... I mean, 
it, you know, it, it's, it's a pivotal time in life. Although it's a pivotal time in my career, I think if a, you know, a young kid that don't don't make music, you know, between twenty and twenty five, that's like very real. Yeah, you know what I mean, between nineteen and twenty five is mm-hmm. real. That's why I asked what you grow in life as well, you like I mean? on a personal level. So yeah, I think you know, life lessons are happening, and maybe everything is amplified because you are an artist and and that, and you know, you, you might have to learn things quicker than the 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 other kid. Um, but we're, you know, moving about, we're, tra- we're moving around the world and we're traveling a lot and I've gained a lot of experience and, um, and just learn everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, everyone's still learning, but I like, yeah. literally I kind of, I, I really grew in those years, you know what I mean? You, mm-hmm. you, you learn what, who you want to be, um, who your friends are, you know what I mean? That's a... It's a major thing. Used to be like plus twenty on the guest list mm-hmm. everywhere, <laughs> and then it's like kind of you know you you fall out with certain people and the circle gets smaller. You know what I mean? Like those kind of those um those real lessons. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's and it's tough because everyone's looking at you like you're the the one that's supposed to save them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's not really like that. And yeah, it's it's tough for like young artists coming up when they haven't got no one that's been through it to yeah. to tell them what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Because it's all, everyone's experienced it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel with... It's to where he's, whereas younger artists now, like a like a Dave or whatever, he could just, he could shout me or gigs and whatever and say, yo, this is kind of, have you, uh, you've probably been through something like this. Da, 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 da. You can feed it back. You know I mean, not sort to say he ever has, but yeah. I mean, he can and that's that door's open, you know what I mean? But I don't think we had anyone to really to look to you and stuff like that. Know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. So then what's the music industry game like to you? Obviously stuff are happening, all new stuff, labels, album, this, traveling the world. What's that like to you, that experience getting your head around the music industry at that point? Um I don't know, I just always try to with me, I've just tried to Try to be myself. Try to remain true to who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, not to get lost in the source, whether that's positive or negative. You know what I mean? Don't buy into it too much. And, you know, keep your family around you. I'm very much that kind of person. So I'm not really an industry, you know what I mean? You don't see me everywhere. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, I think people kind of that observe me from the outside looking in probably know I'm not. Um, super industried out uh, so I don't know I really feel like I'm kind of on the on the outside of that kind of bubble that kind of thing circles, you know what I mean and just really over the years I've learned to um, learn how to dip in and dip out you know what I mean mm-hmm. R- release something and then kind of go away and and I'm gonna come back when I'm when I'm ready. I, I don't just want to be around for being around sake. I want to be around when I have something to it's say. Absorbing, yeah. And you know what I mean. This is this is um you know what I would like to offer the world. And you know I'm here and I try and just do the things I like to do and limit the things that I don't. Um, and keep it like that, really. So do you remember traveling the world for the first time? Like the first countries you went to. First bookings. First bookings was like Iron Napa. Okay, yeah. So the yeah, second. And that yeah. was like 2003, around that time. So we was doing Nappers and and that stuff. And um, yeah, that was, we went to Napa for like five weeks, five and a half <laughs> weeks or something crazy like that. I think it was booked for three weeks and then we ended up staying. And Who's around I, you at that time? Who are you seeing on the circuit? Around that, with me was, um, um, Matt, ten D double hyper, and that's it. Yeah, that's that's who's with me. Okay. Um, uh, Demon was over there as well, with like East Connection. He was with and like yeah, like I remember. I think Frisco was over there. So like just you know, yeah, MC yeah, like yeah, people yeah. was over there, but that's who was with me. 
Um, so yeah, that that was a a, a key time for me because that was when I when I first knew it was serious. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, because you're stuck in a bit of a London bubble, and when I went there, I realised that there was people from Nottingham and you know Leeds and Birmingham, and Manchester. Okay. And that was all kind of like knew every word of the lyrics and was proper into man. And when we came back, I think that kind of gave me a new kind of battery in my back and yeah. made me go even harder. But after the albums and I started traveling, um, where was I going? It was like, um, like f New York. Okay. Europe, like France, Germany, place like that. But New York, that was I went, I think that was, yeah, I think that was, yeah, think that was yeah. 2007. We'd done a couple, two shows out there. I was with Demon and Getz on that one. No, no, Getz did, yeah, I was I was with Getz, yeah. Yeah, I remember because he ran up a crazy phone bill. He just was using the hotel <laughs> like it was like his landline at home. Yeah. <laughs> when we checked out, it was mad. It's like, what are you doing? There's yeah. like, a phone, isn't it? I'm just, I'm just using the phone, calling mobiles in England. Mad man. Um, but yeah, so that that was the thing. And then, you know, year after year, it was just like more and more places. And, and then I think it was like... Um, I done a, I done a feature with Gorillas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, was, yeah, that was maybe I don't want to say 2010 or 11, 10 or something like that. Was that out, was that the you and Bashi one or? Outside? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? And then uh, and then yeah. Through, through that tour, like when you see when you say like travel the world, mm -hmm. like that really was traveling the world. The whole world. You know what I mean? And 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 I saw a lot of places that I'd never been before. They done the whole of America and. Um, Europe and then uh, Lebanon and Syria, you wow. know, like it yeah. was. Um, yeah, we went to some <laughs> some places, man, and um, that was like a a massive um, growing ex experience. You know what I mean? Um, and that was big for me, just in life, not even in music. Yeah, I feel like when you people say it all the time, but when you travel and see new places, just like you had that experience in Ayanapa. You see, like, oh, there's more than just my immediate sort of surroundings sort of thing. So definitely have a big impact. That's why I ask about travelling the world and all of that sort of mm. stuff, man. You know, it's, it's important. It's really important for an artist that, you know, you, I feel like, I don't know, it's like being stuck in a bubble sometimes produces great material because you're just in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think if... if um, I don't know. If Nas had travelled the world, he would have made Illmatic necessarily. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? It's because he's in the block and that's all he knows and he can just describe everything. He knows the, you know what I mean, the crackhead over there by first yeah. name. And yeah, it's like, you could, you know what I mean? It's just, you can tell. Yeah. You get an, he's like, written it in that block. Authentic sort you know of what I mean? report on his surroundings sort yeah. of thing. But, you know, travelling the world will produce uh, a different perspective, you know, which great material can come from as well. Mm -hmm. um, see, so yeah, so yeah, I think I think both is uh, necessary, you know what I mean? To, 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 to embrace where you're from and to be there, but to also uh, see, see somewhere else. Cool. After that album run, I think we get to like 2010. There's a longish break between the next one. Yeah, I didn't make music for a long time. Yeah, a long, long time. What was happening in that time? We get Top Boy in that period as well. Yeah, two two seasons of Top two Boy. Two seasons of Top Boy. Let's start there, in fact. Yeah, how does that come into play? I think the break was just like, I don't know, I just weren't really inspired to make music. And, and I think the Top Boy thing worked itself out because it gave me something else to do, um, but something else I could be a student of, yeah, yeah, of, you know what I mean? Like, um, kind of like acting for the first time, although super scary and super like doubt in yourself and don't know if you belong. Mm -hmm. It kind of allowed me to be that kid that first stepped into the music studios yeah. and was like curious about everything. You know what I mean? 
all these buttons. What does that button do? That's like, that's a compressor. And what does a compression do? You know what I mean? What's that? Mm. That's, that's reverb. If you put more in it, it sounds a certain way. If you, you know, if you make it more dry, it sounds like this. And it's just like, I'm just soaking up everything. All of it, yeah. You know what I mean? So when I was like acting now, it was proper, probably annoying Ash <laughs> and directors because I was asking bare questions. You know, why did you do that? You know what I mean? Like Ashley will turn certain ways sometimes, but he's finding light certain times. Okay. Or he's thinking about, he's thinking what makes it easier for the, the DOP, you know, how it, how it works when, when they turn over and turn around to the, the, the other angle. You know what I mean? Mm. All these things that he's kind of learned over the years. Yes, yeah. I haven't. So I've kind of just, just jumped in. Just jumped in at the defense. Or... You know? So um, it was, it came at the right time and it was a, another journey. And, you know, I found that there could be something else that, I could be creative in and tell stories mm-hmm. without, you know, without you, making albums. Do you remember the initial response to Top Boy back then and how it compares to the response to now? Ah, interesting. It, um, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I remember like it being a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Majorly. Yeah, it was a thing. Like roads went mad. Like, yeah, my family was like, bang on it. We because it was on TV it was then, on so TV we all time, met. Yeah. Like we met around my house. We watched the first episode. You know what I mean? Real, it was yeah. like together. <laughs> you know, it's a bit different <laughs> yeah. now because you don't re- you can't really do that because it's on Netflix. Mm. It's kind of people watch it in their own their time. Own time. Um, which is, you know, has its pros and cons. Um, but it was, it was like the whole. It felt like the whole country was together in this moment. Yeah. You know, at nine o'clock, Channel Four, <laughs> and we was all watching this thing. You know what I mean, so it, it, yeah. And although it is wasn't isn't on TV, it still feels that sort like of it still way. felt like felt like a moment this time. You know what I mean? That the whole nation was watching. I feel like everyone came together for Top Way this time, and it's like. Everyone that was there before, but the audience is so much bigger now as well. Yeah, yeah. So many people talking about it. And I feel, did we, we had social media the first time. Yeah, I I mean, like, there was social media. Yeah, we did have yeah. social media the first time, but now the chat is just... Yeah, it's diff- obviously just another level now. But Yeah, um, what's it been yeah. like this time around for you? It's been, it's been, um, I'd say overwhelming, but, you know, it's been like, it's been good to see, you know what I mean, to to feel the love and support. Mm-hmm. And it's been good that the people weren't let down. You know? Yeah, that's true. Because there's a lot of pressure because on Because that time, it's like, it's like if Dre drops this detox. Now, you know what I mean? We've been hearing yeah. about it for so long. <laughs> it's like, it's going to have to be better than great yeah. to meet our expectations because they've built up this picture in our head. You know what I mean? And I didn't want it to be like that, you know what I mean? Because it was so highly anticipated. I wanted it to like live up to expectation. And it seemed like it has. So that's what felt good to me. Okay, cool. Have you done the big screen yet? Or have you been on TV? Have you done the films yet? Nah, nah. Is well, it something I've, I've, done a, I've done a bit in a little, in a little film, but... Um, is it something? I don't know, one day maybe. I don't know. It's like, for me, it's... What comes, yeah. Yeah, that's what my, yeah. Like people, like people that know me always, like, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, you got to, you know what I mean, Hollywood now, that's yeah. it, you got to move to LA. <laughs> but the people that really like know me, know me, they're like, listen, <laughs> that guy don't care about all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he don't care. But it's not, it's not that I don't, and sometimes it comes off like that, but it's not that I don't care it's just that, like, I'm not chasing, I'm not chasing anything but good work, mm. you know? Um, I just want to be a part of good things, man. Hey. You know? If that happens to be a film, then one day, then that's what it is, you know what I mean? I feel um, like you care about the craft as opposed to the look in terms of 
how this looks. Say you can go Hollywood, you can do all of that. But it's a look, but I feel the craft is what you really care about, even when it comes through in your music as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's that's just how I am. Mm. You know? Um, yeah, and th th those are the people that I, I respect and the artists that I've loved over the years, you know what I mean? You can mm -hmm. tell, you can tell they care, you know what I mean? And that goes with anything in any field, you know what I mean? Whether it's sports or or whatnot, you know what I mean? You can tell Ronaldo's got two and misses one, he's, he's going to be fuming Vex, yeah. over that one. He, he, you know, he cares. Um, and that's, that's how I am. Sometimes that's, you know, it's not the greatest person to be because, <laughs> like, you don't get to, you know, always, like, bask in your success or, you know, always celebrating or whatnot. But it's just always about, like, the next thing. Like, what's the next... What's the next thing? Like, mm. what can I do next time? Mm. I hear you, man. And speaking on football, when I was looking at Made in the Manor, the way I describe it is sort of like the Messi effect. So when Messi plays football, he makes everything look so easy, but you know he's put in a lot of work to get to where he is, sort of thing. <laughs> you know he's put in a lot of practice and it's not simple what he's doing. And when you come back with Made in the Manor, it's just like, when, when you just listen it from top to bottom, you just come back and say, yeah, everyone's doing this. Let me just show you a level and see what you think about that. How was the creation process for Made in the Manor for you? <laughs> yeah, it weren't, it weren't that smooth. <laughs> it never is. But um, it, it was a lot of, obviously, work, but that's what everyone, yeah, everyone works hard. You know, you're not the only one that works hard. Um, a lot of fault, a lot of doubt, um, because it's been so long, a lot of frustration, because mm. I wanted that album to come out way earlier. I wanted to finish it way earlier, but it just wasn't ready yet, and I weren't really happy with where I was, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of, a lot of that going into it, but I just knew... I didn't care if it took five more years, you know what I mean, or whatever. Yeah. If I was going to come back, it had to be exactly the way I wanted to. You know what I mean? And did you have and an I, overall vision for it? The album. Yeah. yeah not how it would be received. And okay. like not Like, just in terms of the music. But I knew if, like, I was prepared to fail on my own terms, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and I just said, I'm never gonna really like compromise the artist I am ever, you know what I mean? And if that means not being able to make music or whatever, then so that's, that's yeah. what it is. But no, no one ain't gonna tell me, make this and make that. I'd rather just not, you know? So it, it was, um, it probably was a lot of pressure put on myself, but also from um, public. Um, yeah, that's, 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 what, that's the zone I remember making Being the album. That. So that was the frame of mind you was in at the time? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, really, really happy that it was received well. Um, yeah, man. What are your favourite tracks from there? If from you, Made in the Manor? Made in the Manor, yeah. My Sound. Strangers, Free Wheel Ups, Roadman's Hymn, Ends. Like, <laughs> there's a bit, I think there's a bit of every, a bit of each yeah. track that you have favorite yeah, bits from, yeah. sort of thing. Those are probably my favorites of the thing. But obviously, then it's like, Free Wheel Up, you know what yeah, I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you have favorites for different reasons. Mm -hmm. When does favorite your. Favorite to perform on there, or favorite uh, ones, you know? Like, to all of that kind to, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did your relationship with Gig start? Because that goes back from before. I know you was on one of his mixtapes, I think Straight Murky and or something like yeah, that. I was on that. Yeah, I was on that. Yeah. I don't know if that was after or before, though. Um, I've known... I don't know how long I've known gigs. I've known Buck for, like, super, super long time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, yeah, met gigs somehow and just been... Cool, ever since, yeah. cool ever since, you know what I mean? Like, um, what do you yeah, think I'm about really his 
impact on UK music, gigs as an artist? Huge. And sometimes doesn't get spoke about in the same way that Wiley's does for Grime. Mm -hmm. But I feel gigs is that exact same person for UK hip hop, you know? Um, I think I think there's like a, you know, you have, you know, events or people, there's like a pre them and a post them, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like gigs came and everything was different afterwards. Like, to me, he is that milestone. Mm -hmm. So I feel like his importance is like huge, 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 huge. And yeah, he, he's the man. And beyond music, he is also that person just as a person. Okay. You know? And for listeners that don't know, like gigs, he's like the glue um, between a lot of, you know, people. And he really is like, yeah, he really is a good father in sense that like, you know, he speaks to everyone and everyone speaks, calls him. You know what I mean? It's like, he just really looks out. You know what I mean? He's a real, real, real individual, man. Yeah. And that's the reason I asked that, because I feel like, the gigs effect on UK music can sometimes be missed. But what I like about the both of you guys is your genre backgrounds are sort of different-ish, mm. but it comes together so well. And that's sort of the mark of good artistry and good artist sort of thing. Yeah, I, I feel like that's what true collaboration is. You know what I mean? When people have a mutual respect and do separate things, but find a common ground that they can connect on. And it's not like, you know, one person's just jumping on what the other person does mm -hmm. and they can kind of fit in or that person's jumping on that. It's like they make a song that only, only they could make. make. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was different. They, they probably would have never made individually, but together this is what can happen. Saying, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And that's like true collaboration. Yeah, to me. Yeah. No, I understand that for real. We have another short break before the recent album. And I wanted to ask you, in this time, what did you think about the growth of the UK music scene? So this is from, like, 2016 to now. Yeah, it's it's mad because after Made in a Manor, like, a lot happened. Yeah. A lot of albums came out. After my album, I think that was the first one to come out that year. Mm -hmm. And that was a, like a, you know, a, a pivotal year. I think Skepta's... Skepta Konnichiwa, yeah. ...come out and, you know, I think Gigs came out and I want to say Stormzy's album came out. 2016? Was Stormzy 2016? I think it may be, yeah. It in and around Rich that 2016, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check on the Stormzy one. Um, it's like, yeah, bare, bare people released albums and the scene just grew and grew and grew and grew. And... You know, it it was beautiful mm -hmm. to to witness. You know what I mean? To be a part of, but but to also witness. Because I remember a time when, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I, thought so. I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember times when it wasn't like that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. back then, back then it was just like, you know, Dizzy had an album out. Yeah. Then nothing that year. Next year, I had an album out. Or oh, Wiley had an album out, whatever. Then the year after that, I had an album. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like yeah, yeah, yeah. one at a time. And it was just like three albums for like time. Three artists doing albums. And yeah, it's it's beautiful to see how how many people are, you know, out there and producing good work and, you know, touring, doing shows and, you know, covering up the whole festival lineups and so yeah, to see that growth within the three years has has just been um has been beautiful, um, and yeah, I wasn't taking time off in that three years. I was kind of making making hoodies all summer for real. Yeah. So that's been the span of hoodies all summer, literally from well, yeah, because after Made a Man came out, we toured a lot. Yeah, um, so yeah, it was touring, and when we came to the end of that cycle, started making. This, this straight away and on and off worked on it for three years. Let's talk about the album then, Hoodies All Summer, because 
We've almost had a year like you just described from that 2016 again, right? to 20... Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like that. Cycle yeah, again. it's come but, around... But like, even more this time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Everyone's dropped like a good body of work this year, right? It's, it's been crazy, it's been crazy. But Hoodies All Summer, again, is in that mix, but I, it's almost hard to talk about because I don't even know how to describe the impact. It's one of them ones I don't think will know the impact now mm -hmm. until a few more days in because even in the stuff that you're talking about what did you want to express through this album um just where i was at just like every album just where you're where i'm at you know mm -hmm. personally and just how i more how i view situations and how i view the world and how i view um the country and london and east london you know what i mean it's like got you know such an overview on uh you know, Britain. Yeah. But but it's like, it, it zooms right in as well. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about, you know, uh, Windrush. You know what I mean? Talking about Britain's empire. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's like, you know, you feel you feel the London kind of yeah, all the thing on it. Dance. And then it's like East London, then yeah. it's like you're kind of town. You know what I mean? <laughs> How small do you want to get? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I'm talking about like, I know Sorrentos and what, like to the people that's like super from where I'm from, they're like, oh my God. I was in the ends when Kenny from Network was back. Man, I'm like, Kenny from Network. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's, um, it's just, it's just me. What I wanted to do is, I think Made in the Manor was like very deep and personal telling my own stories Story, yeah and this one was just kind of like looking out you know so it's, it's more it's more reversing the lens mm -hmm. um but i wanted the the music to tell the story of my journey you know what i mean yeah and you can hear my influences and my upbringing through the music yeah you know what i mean even whether, in the visual as well the, the garage and yeah that's mm -hmm. it. Whether that be the grime and the garage and the dancehall and the hip hop that like you can hear it, it tells that story musically, um, but lyrically, I just wanted to speak about, you know, what I see. I wanted to ask you, yeah, this is a it's a tricky one to sort of answer, but just taking a few of the tracks. So, Good Youths Walk Amongst Evil, yeah. At the end of the track, you're almost saying like, "What's happening? What's going on? What's happened to Newham?" Sort of thing. But then in Trouble, we also see. You know, you've got this scene where the uncle's speaking to everyone in the house. Mm -hmm. And he was like, 10 years ago, if this was me, mm -hmm. I'll be thinking the same thing that you're thinking. So what's your perspective of that, being in East London, being in that area as a teenager to now where you are now? How, what, what do you think, how do you think you would have received that message then? And what's your perspective on it now, sort of thing? Mm. It's, yeah, it's a interesting question I, mm. I think messages will be received differently depending on where that person's at in that moment of time you know um it's just like and you, do you remember when you like when people used to say enjoy a school it's going to be the best years and you're saying I, used to see up, it. Man, I can't <laughs> wait to get out of this place and then when you get like literally like two years later you're like i know what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> I missed that. I've got, I got bills now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like... That's why it was so... You know, that speech was so important for me because that's kind of where I'm at. But it, it's not to talk down on a group of people. Um, and the message will reach who it's supposed to reach when it needs to. Um, you know, like... Any hand could be shaken when the blood dries, you know what I mean? If you're in the mix of something right now and someone's just done something to your closest for whatever, you you might as well be talking. Yeah. Do you mean any hand could be shaken? No, you can't. Like, that's just... It's too, it's too immediate, you know mm, what I mean? It's too just, close. It's too new. They might not hear that. A year down the line, two years down the line, they might be like, no, do you know what? Because cause that's what I'm saying. It's about experience. Mm-hmm. Like, I speak to people that are in prison now. They thought that's what had to be done then, and that's just what it was, but they might have made a different decision now. That's what... Was it? It's like 13 years now. That's what 13 yeah. years can do. You know what I mean? 
but he's been feeling that way for a while now. Mm. You know what I mean? So if he had a microphone and he was an artist, he has to tell that story because that can make someone else that's about to make that decision think so. not make it. Yeah. So I have a mic. So I have to tell people how I see it. You don't have to agree with me. I don't have to agree with what you do, but we can have a conversation, you know? And a lot of this music is just a conversation. Yeah, you even say in one of the tracks, let's talk about it, and it sort of mm -hmm. opens the conversation. And then that's why it's so nice to see you go and do Jules Holland and do the tracks that you did. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it, it was a bit frustrating because online and on socials, people will have that clip of you just smiling while <laughs> SYM's going on. But when you actually listen to the track and see the performance, like, the content is way more than just that one clip sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it does open up the conversation, which is why I say people won't understand the impact of it now until further down the line. But sometimes that's the way in. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like... You know, you, you might you might have got into this album f after hearing Class of Deja, then you might have heard Trouble, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, that's, that is sometimes the root in, you know? That bit of comedy at the beginning of SYM, it's like that makes you laugh, that makes you smile, and then it's kind of like you listen more, and then you're like, oh, mm. oh, <laughs> are we saying that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what... That's what art is. It's a, it's a, it's a journey that I'm trying to take people on, um, and I'm glad you, like, realize things like that because and appreciate things like that because it's not easy to go on Jules Holland exactly. and perform the tunes I'm performing. Yeah, like, it's a, it is literally <laughs> a conversation every day mm. while I was on tour. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yo, we need to talk about what tracks we're doing. You know what tracks we're doing. Yeah. Oh, but they said, can you do this one and not that? that? And I'm, no. All right, um, let's talk about it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Come again tomorrow. Like, literally, literally going wherever. All right, let me get on the phone with Alison. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't get on the phone with Alison. But it's like, all right, then do it. But I'm, I'm not being a spoilt brat. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. At those moments, like it, even when it comes to trouble on the radio edits, I said I'm not going to edit out the bit where the stabbing happens and the phone mm. calls made. I know that would make it uh, a more playable radio song, but I think it's really important for things like this to be heard. You know, it, and it takes a lot, and maybe you lose a lot. Maybe I would have lost that Jules Holland performance, or maybe I would lose some plays on the radio of trouble. But it's like I feel like there's a bigger picture. Yes, yeah. you know what I mean. And I'm really out here fighting for. Us, you know what I mean? And just making art and doing what I like and yeah. having fun. But there's a bigger fight as well, you know? So that kind of, you know, what I would like to feel I have some integrity um, w when it's, like, recognised, like, I super appreciate that. Yeah, no facts. And I feel I could see that that's not an easy decision to make. That's why I wanted to bring you up on it sort of thing. And, yeah, it opens up this conversation for all the society to have people that won't necessarily come across this music straight away but they might watch a Jules Holland so it was really really sick to do I'd... yeah all my neighbours was like oh, really? sorry that's all that Jules Holland for you last night <laughs> <laughs> really good nice suit as well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he never spoke to me about music before in life. really? yeah I was like oh it's reaching it's different yeah <laughs> I got two more is that okay? is this like yeah. an edited? Uh, yeah 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 oh so you could edit the time down alright cool. oh, yeah yeah yeah. No. Where did yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah go on yeah it's fine yeah it's fine yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Because I wanted to get certain bits and then we could play the song so people can understand sort of thing. But then it lives as a podcast as well, so um, people can see. All right, two more. I've seen a video to Can't Hold Me Down. Mm. Popcorn up in the crib cooking. I wanted to know, yeah, <laughs> out of all the people on the table, have you tasted anyone else's cooking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, my mum and my aunt was on the table. Yeah. <laughs> There's... <laughs> My cousin, Rachel, hers. <laughs> uh, popcorns, I've tasted his cooking in Jamaica when he yeah. cooked for man. Because he cooked for man in yard. That's yeah, where yeah, we yeah. got the idea to do this. Um, and obviously that day, nah, Lethal ain't cooked for man before. So. <laughs> Gigs ain't cooked for man before. Gets ain't cooked for man before. <laughs> yeah. So they're not trying to show their skills, no? Nah, nah, nah. Do you, do you know what? The only other, I don't know, maybe there's loads of artists that are into cooking and whatnot. 
The only other one I kind of know is Chip. Chip, I was gonna say. Yeah, that. yeah. We see Chip. We see him chef. Yeah, out, Chip. Man. Chip cooks. Um, who else cooks a bit? I don't know. I've seen J2K do a little thing. I know he weren't really hands on. He was. You know what I mean? There was <laughs> there was things chopped. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he chopped them, but yeah. Now Chip, I know he's into he's into cooking. And Pop, but Pop got super, super into cooking. Like yeah, that day. Cheap. So we met at the Fishmongers. For anyone that ain't seen, they gotta go and watch the um, Can't Hold Me Down video. Mm-hmm. It's in two, two, two episodes. Um, but we met Popcorn at the Fishmongers. And then when we left there, we was going to my aunt's house. And he was like, ah, oh, I forgot the seasoning. So my mum was like, yeah, we'll go, I'll go and get you some seasoning, whatever. Then he's like, yo, but Maggie's though. <laughs> like a certain brand, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to the shop, tried to get the Maggie's, couldn't get it. Then he was like, "I oh, don't worry, I'm gonna send someone for it back to his hotel in West London. For real? Went east back to West London because he's got it in his hotel room. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sure they don't sell. Yeah, <laughs> Maggie's at your hotel. He's like, Nah, I bought it with me. I packed it. That's a van that doesn't. Play and he didn't know he was, like he didn't know, he didn't <laughs> travel here knowing he was gonna do this video. I don't think nah, because he phoned me the day of Jules Holland and said he's. He's here, and then, um, yeah, we decided to do the video, so it all came whatever. So he just travels with seasoning as a standard. <laughs> like, that's how he moves. He's like, I'm a, yeah, like, yeah, he's that serious. <laughs> he's that serious, man. Yeah, that we got so popcorn, man. That's his food, man. G, official, man. And before you go quickly, one last year I wanted to end on talking on Class of Deja. You saw in when you hear your music over the years, you big up DWE a lot. So I wanted to know his impact on your career and then also you and Getz, where that started, how it's developed and where it is now. Yeah, yeah, the D double massive influence on me. Like literally when I first started grabbing the microphone, I was pretending to be D, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, even like <laughs> Even later on in my career, I'm like a couple albums in that. Me and my cousin was raving. We went to Nottingham. We just ended up in some raving Nottingham, some club. And um, we was like mash up in the club now. Like we went up to the DJ. DJ knows we're there, like yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so we grabbed the mic now. We, we went back to back. My cousin was being me and I was being the double. <laughs> <laughs> but I know all the lyrics. I know like, I've even reminded him some lyrics that oh, he's forgot, for you know what I mean? Because I studied the guy. Mm. Studied the guy, man. Um, as a kid, so when, you know, I got the opportunity to meet him, he come to my house as it goes, because um, we had decks set up and we'd done a tape. Um, I wasn't MC, I don't think I... I didn't spit on the tape? I don't know, maybe, yeah. But more like I was kind of just... Nothing Petchy was DJing. Another guy, Petchy, and D Double came and he was like MCing. And we just used to play his tapes over and over again, For over real. and over. And if I got to see him at a house rave, you know what I mean? It was a big deal. And then he used to come to my bridging's house called Ginger and we used to make tapes then. And then I was, you know, joining Nasty Crew and then we yeah. was in the crew together and wherever. Yeah. So that was always like, you know what I mean? A massive thing for, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, like, players that go Barcelona, it's like, yeah, they're, even when they become like guys, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I became an artist and people knew me. And yeah. Like our players are when they move to Barcelona, but they're like, that's messy, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, <laughs> the trainer probably watching how he puts on his boots. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? All of that. And that's, that's how I was with D-Double. And that's, no matter how far I go, that's never lost. Mm. I'm always just that fan every time I see him. You know what I mean? So he he was a massive influence on me and inspiration because he was local and he was doing it and he just, you know, made me believe. Mm -hmm. Gets now, um, just, that's my brother, innit? It's like, we we probably ain't even, like people like Kane and Gets, Kane and Gets, and, and I get it, but we probably haven't even collaborated as much as it say. seems we yeah. have. I don't think we've got... We haven't got five tunes of just me and him. 
Mm. I don't even know if we got four. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the bonds beyond that, you know? Yeah, we was, we ended up in a crew together and then we kind of, well, when I first went on tour, supporting acts for the streets, Skinner, I bought Gets With Me and we traveled a bit and you know what I mean? We just grew tight from then, but mm. we just like got a mutual respect. We really um, respect each other and respect what we do. Um, I'm a massive fan of his. Um, and we're just friends, like, like me collaborating with Gets now is like we met the we went to the spa the other day, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> we, we didn't write, write no lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the spa, then we went and had dinner. Then I dropped him up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's but that's how it. it we're just friends. Mm. We're just friends. But um, yeah, it's it's great to be a, a friend of someone that is um, super talented like he is, and. Probably, I could speak for a lot of people in saying like, I'm super glad that it feels like he's getting the credit and respect now that he's probably deserved, deserved yeah. a long time. Because the people in the inn know, and people that are super on it know, but like the wider community, I don't know, I think it took a little while for them, but um, he's, he's very, very serious artist and writer and one of the best we, we've ever we've ever seen and that's like when i say that it's no like you know the I mean, small thing yeah 100 yeah. yeah, percent. thank you very much for coming in man tour soon you already shut yeah. down royal albert hall i was on the radio so i couldn't come but the, it looks like <laughs> i'm gonna regret this for the yeah. rest of my life not being there yeah but tour's a, coming up as well it was a moment yeah so next tour yeah end of jan february um yeah, we'll go again. Wicked. Say no more. Kano, everybody. Nice one, man. Respect.